guys, it's Payam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Um, I thought we'll talk about first time buyer mortgages. Um, if you go through the internet and you only have to search through YouTube, you type in first time buyers and you are bombarded with lots and lots of videos, websites, all talking about how first time buyer mortgages work and how people can help you with it and the different types of schemes that are out there. So I thought I'd give you a sort of a no nonsense uh, a video on the subject and we'll talk a touch on some of the key things that you need to look at before you even go for a mortgage okay before you speak to someone like me um, so let's look at it if you're a first time buyer let's just imagine you've got some money saved up yourself um, and you're in a position now you're thinking about buying a property um, before you start typing in things you've already done it because you've typed in first time buyer probably to see me right now but um, some of the things you need to consider firstly is what type of scheme you want to go for as a first time buyer you can either buy a property outright yourself you can try to go for a help to buy scheme you could try to go for a, a shared ownership scheme and there are also other types of schemes like right to buy uh, whether it's the uh, right to buy from a council or from the housing associations you're all first time buyers as well so um, but let's look at the main three options buying outright versus help to buy versus shared ownership and let's look at um, the advantages and dis disadvantages of these schemes um, it's no point just running and sort of say, oh yeah we'll do mortgages and no problem we can do this and we can do that from my perspective as a mortgage broker it doesn't really matter which one of those three you go for um, we still we still get the mortgages to do with mortgages but it will have a fundamental impact on uh, you yourself and your affordability and your future vi viability and whether you end up getting stuck into something that you can't get out of this is the time you make the decision and unfortunately when you're speaking to whether it's developers on a help to buy front whether it's the shared ownership people whether it's the estate agents when you're buying outright they're not going to give you impartial advice about this stuff because they've got they've got something to gain now from my perspective I've got something to gain. It doesn't matter what it is because all three types of schemes you go for, the only thing I've got to gain is a mortgage. Okay? And, and at the end of the day, you need a mortgage to go for a lot of those schemes if you uh, don't have uh, the money to buy outright. So my, my um, advice or my, uh, the way I will talk to you is not skewed by my own self-interest of you know, selling you or pushing you down a certain route. So let's talk about the, the preferred option, and that is, it is my preferred option, and that's buying outright. And there's a couple of reasons why I believe this is the best option, and this is, should be always your first and primary um, way of getting a, a property. Uh, one of them is uh, the good points. Let's go through the good points. The good points are you buy the property, you're not beheld to any scheme rules, you're not be held to the government for a loan. You're not be held to the shared ownership people when the property is being valued and, and, and remortgaged. You know, it's a lot more simpler once you own a property outright yourself. OK, so that's why I like it. You're not held into you having to buy a new build overpriced property or buying in certain developments because the shared ownership people only have them in their developments. You know, you are pretty much free to do what you want as long as you can afford the property. Uh, and this brings me to the second point, you know, you're not limited to loan to values often uh, if it's an older property and uh, whereby a, a lot of new builds, you know, you've got to put 10, 15, 20 percent deposit down. Um, so uh, and also in regards to if you get into difficulty, you may be able to rent those properties out as long as the lenders allow you to do so, where some of those other schemes, you may not uh, have that option. Um, things that people don't think about generally. I'll give you an example. If you are on a, a shared ownership, um, it's very, very difficult to remortgage and debt consolidate. A lot of lenders don't allow you to do so. So, um, you know, you've got the absolute best flexibility buying uh, by yourself. The disadvantages is you generally need to have a big deposit in terms of, you know, you need to be able to afford the property outright. Um, you're not getting a loan from a government or an entity like a shared ownership place. Um, you generally have to have affordability for the full amount. Now, I think actually that's a good thing. I think if you're going to buy a property, you should have affordability for it rather than, you know, sticking it on tick and saying, oh, don't worry, I'll, um, 
I'll give you that in, in, in a year's time. In two years' time, I'll be able to afford this, really. Or in five years' time, I'll be able to afford this. Because things, as we all know right now, things don't go to plan. There's always problems, okay? So that's what I think. I think if you can, you always go down buying a first time buy a mortgage outright. Now, um, there's all sorts of things you can do, you know, gifted deposits from family and friends. I've got videos on what documentations you need. I've got uh, videos on affordability of first time buyers. As first time buyers, if, you've, if you're self-employed or have had historical problems with credit. So they're all first time buyers. But I'm going to stick to really the basics of, you know, what you should do before you start looking at, oh, what's the income multiple and what's the affordability rules on this and what's the lending criteria, uh, lending criteria. Because it changes. All of those things change. The affordability rules change if you're buying outright rather than going for a help to buy or shared ownership. The adverse criteria changes if you're buying outright. Is, is there's a lot more choice than going down the two schemes. There's more choice around self-employment and employment income and how lenders will treat it than going for the schemes. So it gives you flexibility, but it all changes when you go to another scheme. All of those rules change, okay? So that's that's where, where I think we should go. First, outright buying. Secondly, we'll look at help to buy. Now, help to buy generally has is, is really focused on new builds okay so you're dealing with the developers you're dealing with the developers sales guys as well um, and they often what they tend to do is they've got deals with mortgage broker firms and they will try to push you down a certain route because what they will say is look you know we've got to check you out we've got to make sure you've got affordability and then they will push you down another mortgage broker's route um, the only thing I would say about that is do you really want the people that you're buying from knowing how much you can afford okay because they they are almost linked they've got a relationship these two entities your mortgage broker firm who is supposed to be independent and looking after your interest and the people that you're buying from okay so think about that okay um, so word of caution is around that in terms of the help to buy scheme itself uh, there's two schemes there's one for london and there's one for outside of london the outside of london is 20 percent government loan interest free for five years and then after that you start paying that back uh, well you start adding there'll be interest after that um, and then the uh, the london one is 40 percent government loan uh, and then you put your deposit down minimum of five percent deposit on both schemes you have to buy a help to buy uh, it, it has to be a um, new build property so the good points. Let's talk about the good points. Obviously, if you're someone who doesn't have a big deposit but has got decent earnings, that's quite a good way of um, you know, getting on the property ladder. Um, also, help to buy works quite well from an affordability perspective sometimes because a lot of the lenders will only work out the affordability or they will only work out the affordability of you know, the, 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 the mortgage amount. Um, they do have some affordability calculations for the government loan that you're taking, but it's not as harsh as buying something outright. So it does work sometimes from an affordability perspective. Um, however, uh, and I've done videos on this in the past, I think help to buy and new builds is, the, is something you just stay away from short term. Uh, or maybe even longer term, maybe up to about a year, I think those property prices will come down. I think naturally, as the economy gets hit, and with the restrictions that we've got, uh, new builds will start dropping down. I also believe, um, over the last few years, the developers, the people that are selling you these health to buys, have taken advantage of the health to buy rules, the government trying to get, get you... Um, uh, the government oh, got, a, got a call coming through and um, the government trying to um, get people on the property ladder. The problem is they've taken advantage and they've bumped their prices up. So I think those new builds have been historically a little bit overpriced, obviously development to development and, and region to region. But I think on the whole, I think the properties have been overpriced and I think they will come down. So um, that's why I've never really been a big fan of help to buy. I've done many help to buy mortgages for my clients. We've had this discussion and at the end of the day I have a discussion with them and they've had valid reason to come back to me and say, well, I mean, all honestly, um, I want a new build property. Um, I've got the affordability. I just don't have the deposit. I think in the next couple of years I will be in a better position and I could probably buy the property outright or I just want to get onto the property ladder and this is not going to be my long-term strategy. I just don't want to pay rent right now and then I want to buy somewhere else so 
there's there's good and bad points around it, but my preferred option is always to buy outright um, for lots and lots of other reasons that I haven't even mentioned, you know. So um, uh, help to buy, there is an option to, you know, get help to buy. A um, couple of things to watch out for, obviously the developer side of things, the relationship with who they're referring on. Um, help to buy on new build properties. So, um, you know, you've got to be prepared to buy, live in a new build, whether the quality of the new world is going to be as good as, a, a um, an older property and also like I said I think there's whenever there's a downturn the new build sector tends to take take a hit first if just think about it if you're buying in a block of flats and you want to sell and there may be five six other people wanting to sell you've all got the same property pretty much and then it just becomes who's going to willing who's willing to do a deal cheaper so I've never been a huge fan of that new build houses is a little bit different but I think majority of the help to buy stuff that's been uh, done at the moment it's on flats obviously uh, and then there's the third option the third option is going down the shared ownership route now this is my least favorite option and I'll tell you why uh, but let let me first actually touch on what it is so shared ownership is you're buying a share of the property say 25% or 50% share of that property the remaining share you end up you end up renting from the developers or the people that you're the housing is so it could be anybody um so you are you are renting 50 percent, for example and you're buying 50 percent. but you've got to take into account it's not just the 50 percent. you've got to take into account the service charge you may pay ground rent that you have to pay and obviously the remaining rent when you're working out affordability so it's always worth doing your numbers when you see something on zoopla on right move do your numbers on that not just on the your mortgage not just, oh, yeah, well, 50% or, you know, my 10% or 15% is nothing. However, you've got to work out your rent, your mortgage, and the deposit amount. So typically what it works, let's just assume there's a property worth 300,000. You're going to buy a 50% share, so that's 150,000 pounds. You need to come up with a mortgage, uh, a deposit. Typically around most of the ones that I'm doing at the moment, they've probably got about 10% deposit. So 10% of 150, 10% of your share, and then the remaining you're going to get a mortgage for. OK, and then you've got to work out the affordability. So there are some rules around that. Um, you could buy a shared ownership property, which is a new build, or you can buy a shared ownership property, which is older. And that does have a bearing on the loan to values lenders are willing to do. So if it's a new build property, you generally have to have a bigger deposit rather than a, 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 a older property, which generally, you know, they, you can do higher loan to values on. So that's important. So and typically lenders will see a new build uh, is something that has been um, built in the last three years or it's being sold for the first time. Don't get caught out on this one. Um, sometimes developers will buy it, will build a property and rent it out straight away. So that property has never been sold on the land registry before. So just because it may be an older block, it may have not been sold. So it's important you find that out because you can get caught on this later on. Okay, so why do I like it and why don't I like it? Okay, first thing is, Sometimes it's worked. I've got a number of clients that have done really well out of it. We've, we bought them a shared ownership property. They've then uh, gone through over the years and, and bought out their shares at 25% or 50%. And then they become, uh, they've been fully staircased and it's called staircased. And then that means the property is theirs and they may have sold it, rented it and, and moved on. So sometimes it's worked really, really well. Um, generally, what I, when, when I'm talking to my clients, what I want to hear from them is, Generally, look, I am. Look, at the moment, I don't want to pay rent. I might as well get onto the property ladder and then take advantage of if there's going to be any price increases to take some advantage of that. Because at the moment, I've got no advantage at the moment paying rent. Um, at least I feel like it's my own property. And then, you know, that gets me moving. And I believe my job, my circumstances will change. Oh, I'm getting married. My wife's going to come in with me. Whatever, which will impact me. Um, being able to buy my share faster and I, you know I've got a plan I've got a plan is a good idea okay if you're just doing it and then your plan is really to plod along really and it's going to take you 10 years to maybe buy it out of 15 years then you may not be you know getting all the benefits of you know maybe you might be better off getting help to buy because at least on the help to buy you're getting a government loan yeah and you you know you're getting knocked on the help to buy new build sort of scenario however the property is yours so if the property prices go up 
you're reaping the rewards of a hundred percent of that property rather than you know 50 percent share and you know for them it's a great deal for for the shared ownership people it's a great deal because what they're doing is they've got someone who's, who's an owner of it they're still getting rent they're still getting everything paid for and then they're you know in 10 years time they're reaping the benefits of that property price going up uh, and, and you know if it's gone up by you know fifty thousand pounds twenty five thousand is only for you and twenty five thousand for them so happy days for them so it works out quite well so it really comes down to your own plan okay and that's why when i say look you know it's all great sort of me coming out to you and say i do mortgages and i'm whole of the market and this is the rate and that's the great you've got to understand which one of these three schemes really work for you okay and then there's a worth it's worth a conversation with someone like me or any other independent broker who's a whole of the market to try to work out a strategy around affordability let's look at your uh, your income let's look at your overtime let's look at your commission and everything's up in the air at the moment with coronavirus so a lot of the criteria has changed but what i would say as a first time buyer whether you come to me whether you come to another broker it's really really important you get advice don't be tricked in just going into the lender direct because there may be a broker fee here or that you might you might have you know got a relationship with your bank do your research speak to people it's you know advice is valuable because we deal with clients day in day out we will spot things that you may not know about and that's the difference it's the smaller things you know we've, we're all brokers we've all got access to similar lending panels okay um, um, but it's really when you're buying a property it's all about the small things it's about experience and the detail of certain things okay and having the guidance around that is vital okay um, so I hope you found this useful I mean the, the subject first time buyer subject is so vast it's huge um, I haven't even talked uh, about the right to buy I have done videos on right to buys I'm gonna do a new video on um, the the uh, uh, different types of right to buy the housing association right to buys but um, uh, yeah I mean it's a big subject um, I hope you found this useful please do like and share and if you've got any questions Put them down below and I will answer them as best as I can. Um, please like these videos. It does really help us with the YouTube uh, stats. And um, yeah, and get in touch if you've got any other questions. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it.